My name is Dr. Caroline Bethia Jones, and I am back with Real Talk with Real People. And my guest today is Miss Rashia Mason. Rashia is a friend of mine. Hi, Rashia. Hi. We've been friends for a long time, and I just had to have her on the show because she is a fun person, a fun, loving person, and she just makes the whole room smile. Oh, thank you so much. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Rashia while we're here. Rashia Mason is a diversity advocate who enjoys reading, writing, and puzzling in her downtime. Of course, that's when she's not on the beach. And mm-hmm. she's not on the beach right now, but we're going to have a conversation, right? I'm all for it. I'm here. Let's okay. do it. All right, now. Now, as you know, what we try to do in this podcast is bring you real people to have real conversations about real things that they are doing. We mm-hmm. ain't making nothing up. We ain't scripting nothing. This is real talk with real people. Right. So today, I want to talk to Rashia Mason because... I love the fact that she does blogging. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because I always wanted to be a blogger. Really? 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 But really? You've written books. I know I've written books. <laughs> so, this, right? I'm Maybe, trying right? to get to where you are. Well, you know what? I think blogging is like a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's like keeping a diary that everybody gets to see. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. And so, I, but you know what? I can never find my niche. Okay. So okay. tell me, what do you have to do to be a blogger? Well, I guess you really just need to have a desire to write stuff. But I have that. I guess in my case, okay, okay, I have a story about how I got started blogging. You want to hear it? Yes. Okay. I do. So here, this is the story in a nutshell. Me and my mother, we go to this women's Christmas holiday dinner in December every year. We actually don't do it anymore, but maybe about three or four years ago, we used to go every year. And one year at this dinner they gave us journals and so they gave us the journals and they was like okay well next year when you come back for the holiday dinner you're going to give us some examples of some excerpts for your journals fast forward so that was in december of one year probably about 2015 to be exact and i'll tell you why i remember that fast forward to around mother's day um 2016 and i took my mom and her best friend to go see the color purple when it was on broadway Mm -hmm. And we, all three of us go to that dinner. And so I asked them while we were there. I said, hey, y'all ever start writing in the journals? And they was like, nah, nah. And I was like, you know what, me either. So none of us ever started writing the journals. So then actually around that same time, I think in 2015, I had just joined Facebook in August. And in Facebook, all these events come up and there's all this stuff you can do. And so since I had just joined Facebook, I had no idea that that stuff was out there. And I would always see people saying that they were interested in going to stuff, but nobody ever went. And it was all of this cool stuff to do that came up. And I was like, when I asked them about the journals, I'm, somehow in my mind, I made the connection. That night while watching The Color Purple was crazy because I'm crying watching the show. <laughs> but that came to my mind. I said, you know what, maybe I will do all the stuff on Facebook and write about that in the journal. So you just said you never found your niche. Yeah. So that was something that gave me a topic to do. So if I thought when I see fun stuff to do in Facebook, I'll do it and I'll write about it in my journal. Right. But me, if you know me, is to love me and to know that I'm extra. Right. <laughs> so extra me says, hmm. Maybe I'll blog about it because no need for me to just keep all of this stuff to myself. There you go. I should share it with everybody, right? And so meanwhile, I think about this. Think about Mother's Day. So what is that, like May or something, yeah, right? May, so May. May. And so now summertime's coming in June, and I decided I was going to call this thing Rashia's 2016 Awesome Summer of Fun, and yes. I was going to blog about it. The problem is I didn't have a computer. I didn't have a web page nothing so now so even though i had the journal and it started like okay i'm gonna write in the journal and i decided to blog about it i'm like how am i gonna do that without a computer <laughs> so i had to get a computer okay. i had to figure out how to sign up for a blog page and blog page actually come in, comes in different types there's one blog page where it's free and it's hosted by so actually they're all hosted by somebody for the most part right because none of us have servers in our right, basement exactly but it's one where it says, it's like, if it comes from WordPress, it's WordPress, then your blog page title dot com. And I'm thinking like, I don't want that. And so the one that you have to pay for is just your website, right? Okay. So even though it does go through a service provider, it's just your website. And all I could think about in my mind is how one day I was watching something and Oprah's email address was Oprah at Oprah dot com. Okay. And I was like, yo, that is so fresh. So my web page, I said, I'm going to pay for the web page. I got a three-year subscription for a web page. It's RashiaMason.com. So if anybody wants to visit me, go check out my blog page, RashiaMason.com. 
Um, and that's all you got to type in, RashiaMason.com, because it's not necessarily hosted where you have to put in that other part. But fast forward, Rashia's 2016 Awesome Summer of Fun. I got business cards. I got my computer. I got my blog page. And I would start seeing stuff on Facebook. And the first thing I saw was right in West Orange. And they had this huge water slide that went down like a hill over 280. I forget what street. It just came. So it was a water slide that was traveling Oh, a all traveling over. water. Okay, like wait. a slip and slide. It was huge. And I said, I saw it and I was like, I must do this slip and slide. So my very first blog entry from Rashia's 2016 Awesome Summer Fun is me doing the slip and slide. And it's so crazy because I made the NewJersey.com website because I was there, right? Some eccentric looking black girl with purple hair and big pink funny looking <laughs> glasses, right? They was like, we got to get a picture of her. And I think I had a swan too. Like I went with a swan like because you bring a floaty yeah so i had a swan so of course i made the newspaper right and um so that was my first block entry and now since it's my web page i have to maintain it in terms of i had to pay the fee or whatever you know like to keep the subscription but since it's mine i'm never gonna let it go so that's my right. web page forever rashiamason.com anything i do anything i want to do i can put it up there but really the heart of it started with Rashia's 2016 awesome summer of fun that I decided to turn into a blog as opposed to just using a journal. And it's funny, too, because when I went to that dinner that next December, I went and it was like, anybody writing a journal? And I was like, hi. And I was like, actually, no, I didn't have a journal, but I had my business cards yeah. and I was able to pass out my business cards. And I said, but I did start a blog. So thanks to the journal idea, I did follow through and I did write about a bunch of stuff. I said, but you can go to my webpage and gave everybody a card. And it was just like, oh my goodness, that is really the coolest thing I've ever heard. And it's probably one of the coolest things I've ever done. Changed my life, to be honest with you. Well, it is one of the coolest things that I've ever heard because one of the things that strikes me is that all of y'all got journals, right, at that mm -hmm. dear, um, dinner. Mm -hmm. thing, right, right, right. But when you asked if anybody did anything with it or mm -hmm. wrote in it, really nobody did. Right? right. So that also tells me that you have to have a special something mm -hmm. in order to... What motivated you? Because, see, all of us must have a little bit of something inside of them to motivate them to do something. When I wrote my first book, you said, well, what motivated... A lot of stuff motivated me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I, I never saw myself as somebody who was going to sit down and write a book, but there were some things happening that I needed to release. I understand that. You know what I'm saying? So that's what happened. So I guess my question is, what actually motivated you other than... Because something struck you and said, I need to do something with this book. I need to write. In this to journal. be honest, it was it was really just purely just organic. We were literally at the color purple, and I asked them. I said, D "Has anybody written in their journal? Have you done your journal?" And they said, "No." And then, l like I said, I was at the color purple watching the show, and somehow it just dawned on me that I could use. And again, because I was new to Facebook, so that was I think that was the inspiration because I don't necessarily have a bunch of friends to do stuff with right but at the same time i'm outgoing i like to have fun yes, i love sure. doing stuff so we're seeing all the stuff on facebook at first it was like oh you're on facebook there's tons of people to do stuff with because everybody wants to go to this stuff but nobody was going and you would think that like a huge slip and slide that more people I know would go to that? But it's see, crazy. Nobody went to that. I didn't know that there was a slip and slide in West Orange. It's so, crazy. It's, so it was crazy. It how, was bananas. How was that advertised? Because I didn't... The, it just popped up on your Facebook page. It just popped up. Events near you. And it popped up. It was like, hey, huge slip and slide. Blah, okay. blah, 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 blah. Uh -huh. And actually, the footage of my slip and slide is on my YouTube page, Rashia Mason on YouTube. All right. Y'all heard that. We gotta go <laughs> to Rashia Mason YouTube, and YouTube, uh -huh, YouTube on YouTube, so we can see and you can see the actual footage of me because, of course, I took a camera and as I was sliding down this huge slip and slide in West Orange, I, I recorded it. Well, we're gonna have to go see that recording. Even I'm gonna go see that recording. So I want all of y'all to go see her recording at Rashia Mason at YouTube. That's right. Okay. All right. So we know that you were motivated to get started, but a lot of people get motivated to get started and then things fall on the wayside mm -hmm. so if you had to give our listeners some advice or something that can help them to move forward here's my thing I like for people to step out on faith and then move with courage okay that you know that's been my tagline for all of my empowerment stuff so how do we encourage women 
men, children, but women to step out on faith and move with courage to do some of the things that they enjoy. I talk to a lot of women who have dreams, but then their dreams just fizzle away because they just Life. feel like they can't do it. Okay. What advice would you give our listeners? To it, it, so If something is inside of you that you just can't let go of, then I would say that you got to go for it. Nothing... Um, said, what do they say? What's the saying? Nothing beats a try, a fail, but a try, or a try, but a fail. Something to the mm-hmm. effect of if yeah. you don't at least try it, right? You, you know already I mean, failed. you already failed. Yeah. So, if nothing else, try it. Um, I would say that my whole thing is really just different because who knew that I wanted to write stuff, right? So, I never been one to sit around at home and write poetry, I never been one to just pull out a pen and paper, oh, let me write. Um, to, in fact, I hated school. So this That's whole fair. thing with doing a blog, I turned out it's a lot. It turned it's a lot of work. I mean, I had to it take is. pictures it of is everything. A lot of work. I had to be committed to at least posting one thing every week to keep it yeah. active and it keeps stuff up there. I had to find things to do. But I say that if it's something that you feel so that like, passionate about, because to be honest, when I started this thing, and I'm one of those people. That when I say I'm going to do something, I'm totally into it. I'm right, totally right. like, and that's why I said, when I said I was going to have a, start a blog, I didn't even have a computer, right? So within like a few weeks, I had to get me a computer because that whole thing with the water slide, the slip and slide in West Orange, that was coming up in like a few weeks, right? So I had to really get my act together from the time I said, for like from Mother's Day, that right. I was going to do it until it was time for me to start actually putting entries in the journal um, or on the blog page. So I would say, really, if you feel like there's something you want to do, focus on it and get it done. Don't let anything stop you because the only thing that can really stop you is yourself. It's yourself. Yeah, you have to be committed. You do. Yeah. You do. And you have and you have to find time. You know, we're all busy. Yeah. We all have a lot going on. Um, and so it's really just if if it's something you want to do, I always had this thing about people that I know growing up because I know people who could do hair, I know people who can make clothes, yeah. and I always said about people, I said, well, if I could find something that I love to do, because I had no idea like this writing thing was something that I yeah. would like doing or I wanted to do or that I could do, I said I would do it, like, and I would do it wholeheartedly, and I would do my best to try to make some money from it. And so blogging is how I learned that I wanted to write or that I could write because I had to find a way to take this experience that I went out as just a good sheer fun. I mean, it was fun. I did great stuff. I went barefoot in Bryant Park um, to a party and they had Questlove was the DJ. It was out of control. You know, like I did a bunch of stuff that summer. My 2016 Awesome Summer of Fun was totally awesome and amazing. Beyonce concert at City Field. Like, it was just feel where I went to Puerto Rico on a whim. Like, somebody said, let's go to Puerto Rico. I was like... Now, were you motivated because of your blogging? Partly, yes. Partly, yes. So, I was... I had to actively seek out stuff to do. And then, why I said Puerto Rico on a whim, because I talked to somebody who I hadn't spoken to in years, and she said, yeah, I'm going to Puerto Rico. You want to go? When you going? She said, like, two weeks. I was like, Yes, I want to go. It's 2016, awesome summer fun. Let's do it. It's fun. Let's go. Now, and I went. You see, that's why I love this young lady. <laughs> because I'm telling you, I watch her on Facebook religiously because she is always doing something. <laughs> always. And I'm always giving her my thumbs up. I don't Thank always you. comment, but it's like, okay, this girl right here. <laughs> I'm going to keep my eye on this girl right here. Yeah, I, li- I like to be out there doing stuff. And, you know, although I don't necessarily have... I don't do a bunch of stuff, and I don't necessarily have a bunch of people to do it with. But when I do something, I go out there and I do it. And it's fun, and I'm having myself a good time. Part of my tagline is that when I'm not at the beach. It's summertime right now. I love going to the beach. I love being at the beach. So that's really my, if I wasn't, you know what I'm saying, if I didn't have something else to do, then I would prefer on Saturdays and Sundays to to be be at at the the beach. beach. But yes. Like, now let's talk it. about you. You said um, making money. Uh huh. Are, are you making money blogging? Not necessarily. But so, blogging has told me that I can write for myself, and then somehow I started doing articles. Okay. And so now I write articles, and I'm really trying to expand myself in 
writing articles i want to try to write for like magazines and newspapers because i feel like why not why not and right now i am actually getting paid by a website it's called fresh.com that's p-h-r-e-s-h and you can find a few of my articles out there and they are actually paying me to write articles they actually ask me like can you write an article okay. about this and i'm like so you see yes. you can turn your passion into mm-hmm. books mm-hmm. absolutely mm-hmm. yeah all right let's talk about this puzzling <laughs> okay <laughs> that's my favorite i know <laughs> I love it. let's talk about this puzzling <laughs> what got you into puzzling see like for you it's puzzling for uh, me it was paint by number okay okay um So, reading, writing, puzzling, they all kind of go together for me, right? And I actually have on my blog page, of course, because in my world, I'm an open, I like to say I'm an open Facebook. Everything you want to know about me is out there in the public. I hide nothing. I am out there in the world. Real talk, real people. Yeah, I am a Rashia Mason on everything. Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, Rashia Mason, I'm out there. But, so on my blog page, I have a thing called reading... Um, like reading and how I love it so and it's crazy because like I said I hated school right I hated it I think so, a lot of people hated school I don't they think they truthful. hated it like I okay. hated, like, I <laughs> hated right. it and the fact that I actually that I have two master's degrees today right, exactly. is a total you know, surprise it's, it's the people who, who have all the degrees that hated school I'm when you talk to people you. with degrees they will tell you I did not do well in school I hated I didn't. school I it's didn't. almost like you you have to challenge yourself man <laughs> I guess that's what it is because my I feel like my mother beat me up to go to school go go do this do this I'm, no I don't want to keep going to school so that's how in college I hated school up until and I know this May 26 1999 that's the day I graduated from college I was giving myself I know the day, what, you graduated. Like, the day I graduated from college I hated school every time every moment I hated it I I got the chicken pox on purpose when I was a little girl. <laughs> I touched somebody else's chicken pox that was on her foot oh, when no. I was in like the sixth grade so I could get some days out of school. I was like, oh, you was out of school for like two weeks? So if I get the chicken pox, I'm out for two weeks? Let me get these chicken pox real quick. <laughs> did, did you get the chicken pox? I sure pox? did. Oh, wow. And I was out for two weeks. Loved every minute of it. I was itchy, <laughs> but it didn't matter. I was okay. in school. Okay, kids. Kids. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't touch somebody with I the chicken pox so it. that you can get the chicken pox. I'm telling I, I hated it. And then come to find out when I went to grad school, um, I actually loved school because they said that participation is 50% of your grade. Oh, and yeah. I said to myself, wait a minute. So you mean all I got to do is talk? show up? Yeah, show up and talk. Oh, <laughs> you done met the right one, right? And so, <laughs> it's, it's funny. I hear parents <laughs> say to kids, all you had to do was show up. You it's know, true. Serious. It's true, though. Show up and talk. And then the other, like, maybe 30, 40% was that big 30 page paper we had to do at the end. And that's another way yeah. that I found out that I could write stuff. Because at first, I was. Um, very intimidated by writing 30 page papers i was yeah. very intimidated i use comic sans if anybody who writes papers you know that, that comic sans that will turn one page regular space into two and a half pages double space i'm just telling you for the record comic sans use it but um <laughs> <laughs> it's I true. Have to remember that. <laughs> it's true but um I was at first I was very intimidated but then eventually you know you take one class at a time when you're working and going to school at the same time so I was working at the time and going to school at night or whatever and um I had by the time I got to about the third class I had gotten to a point where I could literally just write 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 just keep I could go on and on and on and on but not just go on and on and on but it made sense like right, it was right, I would right. do my research initially up front but then I really just wrote from my mind and from my own experience right. and what I think about things and I could put it down on paper and I could craft the argument to say like this is what the issue is this is why the issue was a concern if we consider some of these things one two three points that if I, I could do that and then I could come up with some graphs and charts to throw in because it was after all yeah. a school paper um, and then eventually I would I would have written so much that eventually and I'm saying if you look at some of my papers from grad school you have to cut you'll see it. eventually at, at one all of a sudden it just be like and in conclusion because I had done my 30 pages and I was finished now to yeah. keep going was just futile so in conclusion and it's like a little half a paragraph like we should do this because it's gonna work but right right that's right. where I learned I could write so I guess writing started yeah. 
then with that too yeah and once you learn how to write when i say learn how to write i don't mean everybody knows how to write right but right. once you really start understanding mm -hmm. and and because it's with the understanding that makes you want to keep going. Yeah. That's what you yeah. said when you did all of your research. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's right. just like me when I was writing my thesis paper. It was the same thing. It wasn't the writing part of it. It was the work was gathering that information. Gathering the information. Doing so the research. So you could process it for yourself. Right. And, and once you process yeah. it for yourself, mm -hmm. then the rest of it is easy. Yeah. Because people can talk about what they know. Right. And Absolutely. And they can talk a and long And you can go on and on and on. <laughs> so forgive know. me for talking so much. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, about what they know. Yeah, it's true. All it's right. really true. So writing, puzzling, let's see the link there. So at one point, I was doing a bunch of reading. So writing, puzzling, reading, they all really go together for me. And at one point, I had read a bunch of books. I was reading a bunch of books, probably over that 2016, 2017 time frame. Um, I read before in my life, but at this point, I was picking it back up. And when I was reading... Maybe like three of the books I read at the time, they were puzzling in these books. And I said to myself, well, Rashida, you used to puzzle. And I did. I'm an only child. So my mother got me puzzles all the time because what else she going to do with me? <laughs> right? She don't feel like playing. So <laughs> she brought me puzzles all the time. And so I was thinking, so I was reading the books and they all, everybody's puzzling in these books. And I said, well, I'm going to get me a puzzle. And I went to the store. I bought one puzzle. And that puzzle has changed my life again. Again, something so small, right? So the blog changed me, started me writing, and buying that one puzzle as an adult, right? Because yeah. as a child, it's like your mother gives you a puzzle, so you do and as you, you do it, right, yeah. and it's whatever. Yeah. But I didn't necessarily have like a I love puzzles as a kid. It was right. just like I'm the only child. I'm here by myself. I might as well put this together. All right, mom, what I'm going to do now? I'm finished. Like it was that sort of thing. Yeah, right. But now as an adult, I buy puzzles I have so many puzzles. It's crazy. But I like to just sit around our house and just do puzzles. And before puzzles, so my commute to work is an hour and a half each way. So I would typically read on my commute. So when I come home, I'm not reading books. And then I would only write if it was something to write about, right? right. So if I have anything to write about, I'm not doing it. I'm just laying in bed watching TV at home. Right. And I found that puzzling got me away from watching so much, so TV. much TV. I would sit in my kitchen for hours. Hours. I could sit in there for hours just looking at pieces and trying to figure out the puzzle. And I think that the whole thing, I think is inspirational. I think it's me creating something or figuring something out. And I think that that's what, where the link is between like the reading, the writing, and the puzzling. So reading is, they say people who read that they that they can write too. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. And then also the writing is me trying to take my based on all the things that I've ever read and heard and learned in my life, putting that, synthesizing that, and making that into something that's really just my opinion. So the views expressed in my articles and on my blog, they right. are all my views. So if you don't, just bear with me. But it's my blog. If you want your own view, never mind. <laughs> but, <laughs> but then the puzzling is also me figuring something out and so i realized that i like i'm an analytical person i'm a reasonable person i'm a rational person and puzzling really is just the manifestation of that it's sitting down looking at something and just trying to figure, figure out, it out how it works and once you feel like you can figure it out and when you do figure it out i've literally cried at the end of putting together some puzzles because some of them really are so hard yeah. they are so hard I'm not, not love good at puzzling. Not good Everybody's at good at puzzling. I want to share um, my love for puzzles with um, everybody. Well, I want you to share your love with puzzling for everybody. And I have a puzzle <laughs> for you. Oh, my goodness. That I'm, I'm so going to give to you so at the excited. end of this interview. I'm so excited <laughs> to see it. I love puzzling. I think puzzling is just so relaxing. It just is really, I turn on my music. And I sit around the house and I look at the pieces and I have a cat. The cat comes and sit in one of the chairs in the kitchen and listen to music and I puzzle. Your and cat I, is named Dottie. Her actual name is Dorothy Dandridge, oh, but for short it's Dottie. Okay. Yes. There we go. How long have you had her? She's been with me ever since I've been a homeowner, so we're about 13 years together. Oh. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now, is that old in cat years? They say it is, but my cat is so, my cat's a black and white cat and so her black side looks good <laughs> black don't crack right, That's right. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, then. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Rashia Mason. Hi. And if you want to know a lot about Rashia Mason, you just go on her website, RashiaMason.com. Yes. And Rashia Mason at YouTube. I'm on YouTube, social media. I'm on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, Rashia Mason. You can follow me. That's R A S H I A. M-A-S-O-N, no spaces, on everything, I like to say. Yes, and I will put all this information on the website, too. All right, well, I think that's it for today. Oh, Again, thank you so much for having me. Thank I you really for coming. Now everyone today. sees why I wanted you on this show, because Aww. you are, like, such a wonderful person, such a loving and caring person, and she has a great smile. You can't see her smile <laughs> on this podcast, but trust me, when I tell you her smile lights up the room, oh, I am you. grateful that she is here with us. I am thankful so much for having me, and um, I'm available anytime. Well, Appreciate I'm going to have it. you anytime, because I think there might be some room for you on this podcast Uh uh-oh hold up now i know right (laughs) anyway my name is dr caroline thea jones you're listening to real talk with real people and we will see you next time thank you for joining us